Mr. Trump in the office of the presidency is a danger to the public and the international community. My name is Dr. Bandy Lee. I am speaking on my own behalf and not representing the views of my institutions. Why do we think Mr. Trump is dangerous? The signs are numerous. Just a few examples include verbal aggressiveness. Quiet, quiet. History of sexual assault, incitement of violence at his rallies, mommy. attraction to violence to and powerful weapons, and taunting of hostile nations with nuclear power. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Usually, we have a rule against speaking about public figures we have not personally examined and have not gotten consent to comment on. But we have a superseding rule when there is an emergency. When we see someone having a heart attack in the street, for example, we cannot just walk away but have to treat the person as a patient, even without consent. The equivalent in psychiatry would be seeing someone behaving erratically in an airport or on the subway when someone could get hurt. Because of this, we have a duty to report, a duty to warn, and a duty to protect when someone is a danger. Assessing dangerousness is different from making a diagnosis. In fact, a diagnosis is irrelevant when someone is dangerous. We need to contain them, remove them from access to weapons, and fully evaluate them. Everyone wants a diagnosis, but it would be irresponsible to say without having all the information. But we do know enough to conclude that he is dangerous. Impulsivity, recklessness, paranoia, a loose grip on reality where real consequences matter little, a lack of empathy for others, and a constant need to burnish a sense of power to fight inner feelings of worthlessness. All these characteristics make wars, especially wars with the most powerful weapons, a serious risk. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. This is why we are calling for an emergency evaluation. We are not all Democrats, and we are not concerned about partisan politics. We are concerned about the safety and survival of humankind. That there is no process for evaluating the president or the presidential candidate for fitness for duty, just like any other military officer or civilian service person, is a glaring omission. And not holding the commander in chief to the same standard can be a dangerous situation. The dangers are unfolding right now.